Hi everyone, a very very good afternoon to all of you and welcome once again. So this is the second time we are meeting today. Uh, so welcome back once again. Uh, now this session <coughs> is about a different section of MHCT MBA 2024. And this section, uh, in this session we are going to decode quantitative aptitude. This is part number one of this session. And uh, we will be solving some most expected questions of quantitative aptitude. So friends, welcome back once again on the YouTube channel of Bainu's Exam Prep. I'm Gaurav Gupta and uh, uh, like I'm here for all the aspirants of MHCT examination, the students who will be writing MHCT examination in 2024. So today we are going to discuss uh, some questions of QA and uh, uh, like uh, I am hopeful that all of you have uh, uh, must have finished the syllabus which is related to MHCT uh, quantitative uh, aptitude and uh, these sessions will help you in uh, revising the topics once again. All right. So friends, let's begin with this session. Hello Tanay. Uh, hello uh, Parikshit. Hello everyone. So friends, uh, in this session, uh, we'll be solving some questions of QA one by one. And uh, I'll be giving you somewhere around 30 seconds to one minute for every question. And uh, then after that, we'll have uh, a complete discussion, uh, in-length discussion uh, of uh, uh, each and every question that we are going to take on in uh, today's session. All right. So friends, let's quickly start without wasting any time. First question will appear on your screen in a few moments. All of you take out your rough sheets, one pen, and uh, please uh, try uh, to give your 100% to solve these questions. Okay. And uh, once you have got the answer, kindly post it in the chat box. So once again, all of you welcome uh, Pratik, Rishikesh, Rutuja, all of you welcome in this session. The first question is coming on your screen in a few moments. All of you be ready. First question now. now the question is based on uh, time speed distance, the concept of uh, trains. Now the question says that two trains are running on parallel uh, railway tracks in the same direction. So this is important. The direction is same at the speeds of 45 and 27 km per hour respectively. Now the time taken by the faster train to cross a man sitting in the slower train is 22 seconds. Find the time taken by the faster train to completely cross the slower train given that the ratio of the lengths of the faster and the slower trains is 22 is to 19. All right, any answer? Now this question requires not more than 45 seconds. Maximum one minute, chal. So one minute may answer aja na chahiye. All right, Tanay has given an answer. A few more seconds after which I'll start with the discussion. Okay. Aditya. So Tanay says 21 and Aditya says 35. Two answers up till now. Now our first step should be to convert uh, the speeds in meter per second. Okay. So 45 multiplied by 5 by 18. Okay. This is uh, the first one. So 9 will get cancelled 25 by 2 that is 12.5 meters per second is the speed of faster train and then 27 into 5 by 18. So from kilometer per hour to meter per second if you want to convert you have to multiply it by 5 by 18. 
So this will come out to be 7.5 meters per second. Okay. So these are the uh, speeds of two trains, 12.5 and 7.5 meter per second uh, for the faster and the slower train respectively. So it is given that the time taken by faster train to cross the man sitting in slower train. I'll assume the length of faster train as L1 and length of uh, slower train as L2. Now, faster train is crossing a man. Man is sitting in the slower train. So, I can say that the faster train is crossing the man which is moving at a speed of the slower train. Okay. So, in this case, if faster train of length L1 will cross a man who is sitting on another train. So, I can assume that the man is traveling at 7.5 meters per second. So, the faster train which is traveling at 12.5 meters per second crosses a man who is traveling at 7.5 meters per second and they are moving in the same direction as given in the question. So, the distance traveled by the faster train will be equal to the length of the faster train divided by, divided by the speed of faster train minus the speed of man. Okay. Now, the speed of man is also 7.5. Okay. So, length that is the distance traveled divided by the relative speed. Now, relative speed will be the difference of the speeds 12.5 minus 7.5. And this is given equal to as 22 seconds. So I can say that the length of uh, the faster train will be 22 into 5. Just cross multiply this. And this comes out to be 110. So L1 comes out to be 110. Now the ratio of L1 and L2 is given as 22 is to 19. From here, I can say that the length of slower train will be equal to 95. Right? So you can say that 22 upon 19 length of faster train upon slower train is equal to 110 upon L2. So L2 ka value solve karlo and uh, you will get the value as 95. So 110 is the length of uh, faster train, 95 is the length of slower train. Okay. So now we have the speeds of both the trains, we have the lengths of both the trains. Now we'll have to find out the time taken by faster train to completely cross the slower train. A faster train, slower train. So the distance covered will be equal to the sum of the lengths of both the trains. So L1 plus L2 divided by the relative speed S1 minus S2. So L1 plus L2, 110 plus 95 divided by S1 minus S2. Once again, 12.5 minus 7.5. Okay, so this will come out to be 205 divided by 5 and uh, that is 41. So 41 seconds will be the time taken by faster train to completely cross the slower train. So 41 option E is the correct answer. Never mind, none of you have given me a correct answer but important is, uh, important for all of you is to understand the way I treated this question. Okay, all right. So this is it. Let's move on and look at the next question. Now question number two on your screen. It's a simple question. The sum of the ages of five members of a family, A, B, C, D, E, is 180 years. So is present. So they have given the sum of the present ages. Okay. Now eight years back, the ages of five members were in the ratio 2, 5, 8, 9, 11. After how many years will B have the same age as the present age of C? So, it is a twisted question, hai, but easy question. Hai. It can be managed in a matter of one minute. Uh, Tare, uh, I'm really sorry we have moved on to the next question. So Tare, you will uh, have this session available on the YouTube. 
okay so once the session is over you can uh, watch the recording of this session all right Any answer for question number two? After how many years will B have the same age as the present age of C? So basically you will just have to find out the present ages of B and C. So Anshi and B, two answers. So let's start with this question. Now first of all, 180 is the sum of their present ages and they are talking about 8 years back. So 8 years back, if I reduce 8 years from the ages of all these 5 members, then I can say that sum of their ages 8 years back okay, will be equal to present sum minus 8 multiplied by 5. So that comes out to be 140. Now, 140 is the sum which will be divided in the ratio 2, 5, 8, 9, 11. This, is, this was the ratio 8 years back. Okay. So, uh, if this was the ratio 8 years back. So, 8 years back, the age of B was 5 divided by the sum of all these 20, 30, 35 multiplied by 140. Okay, so age of B, five, sorry, eight years back was 20. Okay, and C was 8 upon 35 multiplied by 140, that is 32. Now I can say that <clears throat> B is 12 years younger to him, uh, to C. B is 12 years younger to C. So B will take 12 years to reach the age of C at any point in time. At any point in time, present ki baat kare, 8 years back ki baat kare. So these are the ages, these are their ages 8 years back. So present age of B will be 28 and present age of C will be 40. I've added 8 years, okay, plus 8 and plus 8. So these are the present ages, <coughs> 28 and 40 are the present ages. So after how many years B will have the same age as the present age of C? So B right now who is 28, 12 years younger, will take 12 years to reach an age of 40 years. So 12 is an absolutely correct answer. So option B that is 12 is correct. Question number two. So two students have given a correct answer, Anshi and Deep, both of you. Let's move on and look at the next question, question number three. Now this is easy. A lot of you should be able to give an answer of this one. Yes, Aditya, this is what I have explained earlier. I think you have joined late. So there was no need to add 8, okay? I told you that uh, since the difference between their ages was 12, so at any point in time, B will take 12 years to reach the age of C, okay? Right? So this, I, I already explained that. Now the average weight of 3 sons is uh, 56. If the weight of first son is thrice the weight of second and the weight of third is one-fifth the weight of uh, second, then find the weight of uh, the sun with the maximum weight. Yes, Aditya, I've seen your answer. Uh, and I'm just waiting for other students. Akansha, Aditya, two answers. Nice, good.
All right, let's have a look at it. Now the average weight is 56. So the sum of the weights will be 56 multiplied by three, right? So that is 168. So 168 is the sum of their weights. Now the first one is thrice the weight of second. So first, second and third. So let's say that the weight of second son is x. So the first son will be 3x and uh, the third son will be x upon 5. The sum here is uh, 168. Get the Q of x and find out the answer. Okay? So 4x, 20, 21, 21x upon 5 is equal to 168. The value of x comes out to be 8 into 5, 40. So this is the value of x. Now I want to find out the weight of the sun who's having a maximum weight. The maximum weight is 3x. So the value of 3x will be 3 into 40. That is 120. So 120 is uh, the answer of this question. Okay. Yes, Aditya, I'll definitely do that. Okay. Uh, it is already planned in the future. So don't worry. We'll, we'll have a session on DI as well. So 120 option C is the answer of question number three. Let's move on and look at question number four. Now, Ruby's 1000 is divided among four friends, Ritu, Mitu, Kitu, and Nitu. Kitu gets an amount of money that is equal to what Ritu and Mitu get together. Nitu gets as much as Ritu and Kitu. Ritu and Kitu together get an amount of money that is equal to what Mitu and Kitu get together. Find the ratio of the amounts got by Mitu and Kitu. <laughs> yes, Tanaj. It's it's confusing. I totally agree. I'm just uh, writing all the equations which are given in the in the question. Okay, Aditya says uh, option A. All right, Aditya. You are given four equations. There are four variables. I hope uh, they are uh, solvable. All right, and she says one is to two. 
So two students have given the same answer. I think uh, option A should be the correct answer. Let's see. Shall we solve it? Now to start with the first and the fourth relation. The sum of all four of them is thousand, and R plus N is equal to M plus K. Okay, na? Huh? So I can say that this, these two values, both of them will be equal to five hundred each. Okay, R plus N is equal to M plus K. The sum of uh, two are equal, and uh, the sum of all four of them is one thousand. So I can say that each of them will be equal to five hundred. Okay, all right. So this is the first one. Now, uh, what can we do with these equations? So if I look at these two, I can uh, eliminate some variable, right? So if I can add or subtract these two equations, second and third equation, if I will uh, do the subtraction, so k minus n is equal to m minus k. So I can write 2k is equal to m plus n. Okay, m plus n का value आ गया 2k. Now I can substitute the value of m plus n in the first equation. m plus n का value first equation में अगर substitute करता हूँ, so I'll get the first equation as r plus 3k is equal to 1000. Okay, r plus 3k is equal to 1000 uh, is my first equation and uh, or kuch kar sakte hai, r and k ki form mein, uh, if I'm if I'm making the equation so r plus 3k a gaya hai okay r and k so r plus m is equal to k M plus N, no. Okay, so R plus 3K is equal to 1000. I've already got. Now, I can put M plus N as 2K or K ka value M plus N put kar sakte hai. Yes, uh, so M plus K. Okay, so people are giving me the ratio. Aditya says 1 is to 1 is to 2 is to 4. So that means uh, you are saying that uh, M and K ka ratio 1 is to 2. Okay, already you have uh, given the answer. Okay, now how can we solve it further? So how can we solve it further? So R plus 3K ka value aagya hai mere paas, uh, 1000. Now if, if I am able to form any equation which is in the form of R and K, then uh, I can uh, get the answer. So... Yaha se R minus K, if I write R minus K is equal to M minus N. All right. And uh, no, of, of no use, uh, this one is. So I will remove that. Okay. It's, it's just about solving the equations. Okay. So it's uh, just about solving the equations. Uh, so if I'll add these two equations, so I will have k plus n is equal to 2r plus m plus k. So k will get cancelled. So I have, okay, so I have r plus m. So again, m and n ki form mein hai. So I need r and k. Wait. I will erase it out. R plus K is equal to N. Okay. So if I'll put N as uh, R plus K. Okay. So in the first and uh, M as k minus r i will i will get it so in the first equation put the value of m and n so r plus k minus r plus k plus r plus k is equal to 1000 i think this is going to give me the same equation so cancel cancel yes r plus 3k so i will not use it now, Ishika is giving me an answer as 2 is to 3. So, one different answer. 
So Anshi has given one is to two, Aditya has given one is to two, and Rishika has given two is to three. So yes, what what will be the answer of this one? <laughs> Come on, what will be the answer? Okay, so R plus N is M plus K. Chalo, ye substitute karte hai. R plus N is equal to M plus K. So M plus K is equal to 500. Now the value of M is K minus R. So K minus R plus K is equal to 500. So 2K minus R is equal to 500. This is another equation I have got. So we have two equations R and K may to solve curl in So if I'll add these two, I will get uh, 5k is equal to 1500. So the value of k comes out to be 300. The value of k is 300. Uh, option A does not seem to be the correct answer. So the value of k is 300. If the value of k is 300, the value of m will be equal to 200. So the ratio of M and K should be equal to 200 is to 300. That is 2 is to 3. So 2 is to 3, that is option B will be the correct answer. Option A is not the correct answer. So option D, that is 2 is to 3 is absolutely correct. Only one student, Ishika, has given a correct answer. All right, very good, Ishika. Now let's move on and look at the next question. Okay, question number five on your screen. Find the digital sum of the numbers of the number of even factors of 9000. Now, two things number of even factors calculate karne hai, and then you'll have to find out the digital sum. Digital sum is basically the sum of the digits. Number of even factors of 9000. So this is how you can write 9000 as, okay? Now, since you want to find out the number of even factors, take a two common. So I will get 2 square into 3 square into 5 cube. Okay. Now, if you will get, if you will find out the number of factors of this number, which is there inside uh, the bracket. Okay. So if you'll find number of factors of this number, that will give you the number of even factors of 9000. So number of factors here is equal to Look at the powers, add 1 to each of these powers. So 3 into 3 into 4. So 36 is the number of factors of this number. Now you'll have to find out the digital sum. Just add these two digits. 3 plus 6 is equal to 9. So 9 will be the correct answer of this question. Okay, that is none of these. Let's move on and look at the next question, question number 6. Anshi, for last question, yes, the number of factors was 36, but we need to calculate the digital sum. Okay, so 36 digital sum will be 3 plus 6, that is 9. So 9 is the 9 was the correct answer of the previous one. Alright. <coughs> okay, now next question number 6. For the scheduling of three cricket matches, 
three different dates are randomly selected from the month of April. Now, month of April, number of days is 30. Yes. Now, what is the probability that the selected dates are from the first 12 days of April? <laughs> now, we need to select three different dates. Okay. Three different dates needs to be selected. The given month is April. We have to find the probability that these dates are from the first 12 days of April. Yes, Aditya, yes, you are absolutely correct. Without solving, you could have answered. Okay, but uh, I have given you the solution in case you have uh, unfavorable options. Let's say the options would have been uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Is type the options that are okay. It's good that you have observed this thing. Okay, so let's solve this very easy question. Now, the three dates are selected from the month of April. The month of April has 30 days. So, total number of ways is 30 C3. Okay, now number of ways in which I can select three dates out of the 30 dates of April is 30 C3. Now, favorable number of cases will be these three dates are in the first 12 days. So, out of first 12 days, number of ways of selecting three is 12C. Okay. So, just simplify this and get the answer. So, it will be 12 into 11 into 10 divided by 30 into 29 into 28. Now, simplifying this, 0, 0 cancelled, 3 and 12, 4 are jayega, then 4 and 7. So, the correct answer is 11 upon 29 into 7. Okay, 29 into 7, 140 and 63, 203. So, 11 upon 203, option A is the correct answer of question number 6. Alright. So, option A, 11 upon 203 is the correct answer. Question number 7 on your screen now. The question is just big, it's lengthy, but uh, the solution is very simple. So, just, they have just made a story out of this question. So, just look at the important part. Any answer? All right. Option C, that is 4.8, is one of the answers. Okay. 
Okay, let's check it out. Now, there are only three important things in this question. Originally, the price was 100. It increased by 11. And then a discount of 5% is given. These three things are important. Okay. So, uh, so Ramesh bought. So, cost price is 100. Okay. Then on the next day, the price increased by 11. Okay, so you can say that this is the mark price, which becomes 111. Okay, and then a discount of 5% is given. A discount is 5%, 5 percent, 5 percentage of 111. I'm sorry. 5 percentage of 111. Now, if I'll solve it, uh, this discount comes out to be 5.55 rupees. So, selling price will become the mark price which was 111 minus the discount which is 5.55 and this comes out to be 105.45. Okay, so now I have the cost price which is 100, the selling price which is 105.45. So, there is a profit of 5.45. So, 5.45 percentage profit over the value of 100. So, answer will be 5.45, that is option A. The profit percentage is always calculated on cost price. So, it will be profit, which is 5.45, divided by the cost price, 100, multiplied by 100. So, the answer will come out to be 5.45, option A. So, option A is the correct answer. And I can see that plenty of you have given a correct answer. That's nice. Next question, question number eight, find the missing term in the given series. Seventy two, seventy four, seventy seven, eighty two, question mark, one hundred, one hundred and thirteen. All right, nice. That was fast. Okay, so quickly we'll have a look at the difference between the consecutive terms. Here the difference is 2, then 3, uh, then 5, then we don't know, don't know, and the last difference is 13. So looking at these numbers written in the green color, uh, 82, sorry, uh, 3, uh, 2, 3, 5, and 13. 2, 3, 5 and 13 are the prime numbers. So if I want to complete the series of prime numbers, here 7 aana chahiye, here 11. So let's see if it is happening or not. Uh, 5 ke baad 7, 89 and then 89 plus 11 is 100. Absolutely fitting. Okay. So 89 is the missing term. The correct answer is option E. Okay, so the difference is the series of prime numbers. Absolutely correct. Good. Next question, question number nine. A flag consisting of six vertical columns to be designed using seven different colors. A flag should consist of all the different colors. So, jitne bhi colors on those are different. Honi chahiye. How many such flag designs are possible? All right, Mr. Sahil. Wonderful. Good, good. So everyone, now we have to uh, color these six vertical columns. 
Now all the colors used should be different and we are uh, uh, we are having uh, seven colors. We are having seven different colors. Okay. Now to paint or to color the first vertical column, I have seven options. I have all the colors available. Now since color cannot be repeated, next one can be colored in six possible ways. Then next will be five, then four, then three, and then two. You will multiply all these numbers and will get the answer. So if you have 7 factorial ka agar value, bhi aad hai, then it will be easy for you. So 7 factorial is 5040. So 5040, that is option C, is the correct answer of this question. Alright, so most of you have given, no, I, I, I would say that all of you, those who have given an answer, all of you have given a correct answer. Wonderful, great. Let's move on. All right, friends. So that was the last question of the day. So this was the first session that we have conducted on the quantitative aptitude and we shall uh, continue doing the same thing. We'll be conducting many more sessions uh, till your examination. Okay. Till then, keep watching all these sessions. Also, we have an MHCT specialized course uh, to offer for all of you, uh, which has uh, 55 plus live classes, 50 plus recorded classes, uh, 250 plus pre-recorded conceptual lectures with more than 3,500 practice questions having different level of difficulties. Also, you will have uh, 12 mock papers which are based on the actual paper pattern. You can uh, enroll for this program by visiting the link that is given in the description of this session. Uh, also, you can visit uh, our application. Uh, and avail uh, uh, this course, uh, join this program uh, at a nominal price of uh, 4,800 rupees. Okay, you will be getting all the things that I have uh, explained on the previous slide. Also, you can register for CAT 2024 DILR strategy, a live interactive workshop free for all of you, which will be conducted on 7th of February at 7 p.m. So hurry up, register for this uh, by visiting our application. Also, you can register for All India free open mock for CAT 2024, which will uh, be live starting 9th of February and uh, up till 18th of February. So visit our application and uh, register for this. Also check now uh, the link that is given in the description for CAT College Predictor, which is based on your profile. Also, if you have any doubts, you can fill in this form by clicking the link. Just fill this form. This is a Google Sheet and uh, whatever doubt you have, you can mention it and uh, we'll be solving this doubt. That's all from my side, my dear friends. You can get social on all these social media platforms. 